Hi everybody, this is Tim Erden, author of Statistics in Plain English, and in this video I'm going to show you how to conduct a reliability analysis in R. Um, reliability analysis is a way of measuring how well variables hold together if you want to put them together in a scale. So say you've got uh, several survey items and you think they're all measuring the same construct, uh, you want to see if they are actually um, correlated strongly enough with each other to make sense putting into one scale, one, uh, one variable, one construct. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is um, run three different reliability analyses. You can see that there are three here. One for task goals, one for approach goals, one for avoidance goals. So I measured um, using a survey um, uh, task goals, which are uh, students' desires to learn and understand the material, uh, approach goals, which is a desire to do better than other students. Um, these are actually in the literature known as performance approach goals and avoidance goals, which is the desire to not do worse than other students. <clears throat> so if you haven't looked at it yet, um, take a look at my video on factor analysis. Um, and in that factor analysis video using R, um, I found out how well I, I, I separated these items using factor analysis into three separate factors. Now, this is commonly done where you'll do a factor analysis to see what sort of, uh, how the variables separate, and then you can do a follow-up reliability analysis to see how well do the items that separated from each other, how well do those items uh, hold together. So that's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> um, first, I need to go and retrieve my data set, which is an SPSS, and this is the path that it is on, on my computer. So I'm going to run that and get my data set. Okay, I've done that. Um, next, I'm going to do this in three steps. I'm going to run my analysis. Now, keep in mind, uh, I've already previously um, loaded the script that includes this reliability analysis um, code it, within it. So before you run a reliability analysis, you need to find a script that, that has the code for that. And uh, often you can find the script just by doing a search, like on Google, um, say R script for reliability analysis, and uh, it'll tell you how to go in and get that script and import it into your own analysis. So I'm gonna run that, and then I'll hit the summary. This just gives me summary statistics on the five variables that are included in this reliability analysis. You can see these are the five task goal survey items and their summary statistics on each of those um, for each item in the analysis. Okay, those are the five task items from the survey. And then up here, I'm gonna run this line, the alpha line, and it gives me a bunch of different statistics. First, um, it gives me the alpha. This is a Cronbach's alpha. And um, generally speaking, a Cronbach's alpha is considered to be uh, acceptable if it's over 0.7. Um, sometimes you can go a little bit lower, 0 0.65, 0 0.6. Uh, the higher, the better. And the maximum that you can get is 1.0. So 0.76 would be considered uh, acceptable alpha, an okay alpha. Uh, you get the lower and upper boundaries of 0.79 and 0.74. That is the 95% confidence interval boundaries. <clears throat> now, down here, you get a very um, helpful table. This tells you what your alpha would be if you were to drop in any individual item from the analysis, 
So remember, with all five items in the analysis, our alpha is 0.76. If we drop, if we were to drop this one, the task, first task question, task item, the alpha would drop for the remaining four items, the alpha would be 0.72. So you actually lose a little bit of reliability if you were to drop that one. If you drop this one, the alpha drops to 0.68. So you don't want to drop either of those because that makes the reliability go down. That's not good. This one, in contrast, if you drop this item, the alpha would only drop from 0.76 down to 0.75. So you wouldn't lose much if you dropped um, that alpha. Over here, you can see uh, that you get individual item statistics, and it tells you the sample size for each item. So we got 936 cases. Um, but this is really what's interesting is what is the strength of the correlation between that individual item and the overall um, scale, the overall combination of items. And you can see that that correlation is pretty healthy. That correlation is even stronger. The, this correlation is a little bit weaker and this correlation is a little bit weaker. So these roughly correspond to what we saw up here. If you drop an item that has a weaker, what's known as item total correlation, the correlation between an individual item and the total scale, if you drop an item with a weaker item total correlation, it will have less of an effect on the change in alpha. So um, that is the information that you get um, from the um, um, reliability analysis. I'm not sure what's going on down here uh, with this. I've never looked at that before, so I'm gonna ignore that for now. Now, if you go back up to this window up here, um, you can run the analysis for the other items. We're gonna do this one for the approach goal items. And here you see that the approach goal items, there's six of them, um, have an overall alpha of 0.81, which is good. And um, if you just sort of look at these raw alphas, if the item is dropped, the alpha does not go up above 0.81 for dropping any of these items. So generally speaking, um, you want to keep all of these items because they all contribute something to the alpha. Now if we go up here and we run this one, then what we get is an alpha for the avoidance items of 0.77, which is acceptable and the alpha does not go up when if we were to drop any individual item the alpha would not improve so there's not really a good reason to drop any individual item so that is how you conduct a reliability analysis in r and interpret it